Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate load combinations and specify analysis commands in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on asking the program to perform a direct analysis according to the AISC 360.16 specification. The AISC 360.16 Chapter C describes the direct analysis method, which accounts for the second order effects resulting from deformation of the structure due to applied loading, imperfections, and reduced bending stiffness of members due to the presence of axial load. To incorporate the direct analysis method into STAD Pro, we will focus on adding the following parameters to our steel structure. We will incorporate our second order effects, including P large and the P small delta effects. We will consider the initial system imperfections through the use of notional loads, and we will adjust the flexural and axial stiffnesses of members using the direct analysis load definition. So let's go ahead and turn our attention back to our sample model in the STAD Pro physical modeler. As you can see, we've already created the majority of our structural geometry, including a variety of different load types and load cases. This model contains dead load, live load, and wind load. And in addition to that, it also contains seismic load that was assigned using a seismic load definition. These would be IBC static seismic loads. So our first step in our workflow for incorporating the direct analysis method is to apply your direct analysis load definition. We're going to do this through the use of two different parameters. We're going to assign the flex parameter, which will indicate that members should have their EI values factored by 0.8 times the tau beta factor while performing the global solution and we will also assign the axial parameter. Members listed with the axial parameter will have their EA values factored by 0.8 while performing the global solution. Now the way different parameters work within the STAD Pro Physical Modeler is through the select and apply rule. You're going to select what you want to assign a parameter to and then go ahead and apply that parameter. So for this particular model, let's go ahead and assign the flex and axial parameters to all of the members within our model. To do that, I'm going to highlight all of my members, go to the member tab in the ribbon toolbar, and click on the direct analysis icon. Within the assign direct analysis attributes dialog, I'm going to enter a value for tau b. This would be the initial value of tau that will be considered in the analysis. I'm going to enter an initial value of tau of 1.0, and then later on, I'm going to request the program to perform an iterative solution to calculate tau for each member in each load case. In addition to that, I'm also going to ensure that the axial parameter is selected. Once I click OK, those parameters have been assigned. If I would like to see that information through the spreadsheets, I can click on the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar and then select the direct analysis attributes area. Here I can see the initial value of the tau factor of 1.0 and the axial parameter have been assigned to all members. Now these particular parameters will be created when I send this model over to the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler, if this model also contains a direct analysis command, which we'll get to shortly. The next step in my workflow is to generate my load combinations. Now in the STAD Pro, we do have two different types of load combinations that we can create. We can create a traditional load combination where a set of load results will be combined algebraically to produce a superimposed set of results for post-processing. 
and we can also create repeat load cases. A repeat load case is a primary load case using combinations of previously defined primary load cases. Since the direct analysis method does require us to consider second order effects, including P large delta and P small delta, we're gonna ensure that our load combinations are going to be created in a repeat style load case. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first step in my workflow for generating my load combinations is to ensure that I have the repeat load cases option selected. To check on that, we can go to the data tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the options icon. In the options dialog, I'm gonna select the analysis model option and I'm gonna ensure that the repeat primary load cases radio button is selected in the combination load cases field. This will ensure the repeat load cases are created when the load combinations are generated and brought over to the analytical modeler. And this will ensure that second order effects are considered through the analysis. I am now ready to generate my load combinations. To start this process, let's go to the loading tab of the ribbon toolbar and select the create automatic combinations option. In the automatic combinations area, I'm gonna select the appropriate code and table. I will be performing a design according to the AISC 360 and I will be using the LRFD standard. So here I'm gonna select the ASE 716 and I'm gonna go with a strength design load combination generator that fits my needs. Anything that says strength design would be in LRFD style load combination generator. Let's go ahead and also take a look at this field to include notional loads. Now, according to the AISC 360-16 standard, we do need to consider initial system imperfections, which we can do by either, either directly modeling those imperfections or by incorporating notional loads into our analysis. For this particular model, we've chosen to incorporate notional loads in our analysis. Now for my model, I am going to be performing an iterative solution for my tau factor, and I will be analyzing it and designing this structural system for the LRFD specification. Considering all of that information, I'm gonna determine what my appropriate notional load factor is. And for this particular model, I'm gonna say it's 0 0.002, or basically 2% of the gravity load will be applied horizontally. Now that I've determined my notional load factor, I can go ahead and enter it in this field. Once I'm done and satisfied with all of my inputs, I can click OK to generate my load combinations. Here I can see all of the load combinations that were generated through the load combinations spreadsheet. Now this will show you the primary load cases that were assigned through each combination and each combination is numbered. If I would like some information regarding the notional loads that were determined through this process, I can go to the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the manage notional loads area. Here I can see the notional loads that were also applied. What I'm going to notice is that it will take all of my gravity loads and multiply it by their appropriate load factors plus that 0 0.002 notional load factor that we specified. The program has applied the notional loads in both the positive and negative global X directions along with the positive and negative global Z directions. If I would like more information regarding how the notional loads are determined, I can take a look at my load combination generator. To do that, let's go to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar, and let's return to this dialog. We're not going to generate some additional load combinations, but I do wanna point out one of the areas of the load combination generator. What we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and click on this manage rules option.
Within this dialog, you'll be able to see all of the load combination generators that are installed with STAD Pro. Within each code or table, you'll also be able to see a configuration option. This will give you additional information on how notional loads are considered. Through this area, I can see that when the ASE 716 is assigned through the load combination generators, that dead load, live load, roof live, snow, and ice loads will be considered candidates for calculating your notional loads. That basically means that that 0.2% times your gravity loads will consider these load cases if they're present in your particular model. We are now ready to move on to the third and final step of our workflow, which is to specify the direct analysis procedure. Now, automatically, whenever you specify the direct analysis command, the program will consider both P large delta and P small delta effects. P large delta includes a second order effects induced on a structure due to the movement of its mass under lateral loads. And your P small delta effects considers the second order effects caused by displacement of the members between bracing points. So let's go ahead and take a look at our analysis commands. To do that, let's select the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the analysis commands option. Now this particular model, just like the previous video, will require a multi-step analysis. A multi-step analysis is going to be required when your model contains both IBC seismic loads and either tension only or compression only members, or when you're using those seismic load cases in repeat style load combinations later on. Now this particular model contains two primary seismic load cases that are using the seismic load definition. So I do need to perform a multi-run analysis. So I'm gonna add two additional analysis sets for each of those seismic load cases. Now the analysis sets for the seismic load cases should appear first in your list. So let's go ahead and move them up. Now for each of those first two analysis types, I'm gonna perform a linear elastic analysis and I'm gonna assign one seismic load case to each analysis set. To do that, I can select the load conditions tab and assign a seismic load to each one. As you can see, once the information is available for a complete analysis, including the configuration options and at least one load case assigned to it, it will become available. And this will let me know that it will be successfully brought over to the STAD Pro analytical modeler. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process for the other seismic load case that is present in this model. Now, if your model contains additional seismic load cases, which were defined using a load definition, you may need additional analysis sets, one for each of those seismic load cases, if you fall into the category of where it's required. Let's go ahead and move on to our direct analysis command. Here, we're gonna select the analysis one option, and we're gonna enter our analysis type. This time, we'll select the AISC, direct analysis. We're gonna go ahead and enter our print option. And I'm going to select my LRFD design option for this particular model. You will want to make sure that this corresponds with all the other information that you specified on your model, including your notional load factor and your load combinations that you generated. In addition to that, we are going to ask the program to perform an iterative solution when calculating both P delta and your tau factor. Finally, we're gonna instruct the program to reduce the EI and to perform a tau B iteration. Now, before we close out of this dialog, let's also ensure that all of our load conditions have been assigned. So let's go ahead and select the load conditions tab. Now, when you are generating repeat style load cases to represent your load combinations, you're gonna to wanna to ensure that all of your combinations and primary load cases are assigned to at least one analysis set 
for them to be successfully brought over to the analytical modeler. Here I can see that for this particular model, dead load, live load, and wind load have already been assigned. And to ensure that the load combinations are brought over successfully, I'm also going to move those over to the selected load conditions window. Now you're going to notice that the seismic load cases aren't brought over to this window, and that's because every single load case in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler can only be assigned to one analysis set, and we've already assigned them to analysis set two and three, so we're done with our seismic loads. Let's go ahead and click OK and save our model. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and send this information back over to the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler. To do that, select the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and ask the program to return to the Analytical Modeler. Once the Analytical Model is created successfully, we will click OK and close the Physical Modeler. Now, once we are in the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler, we can review all of the information that we just recently specified that tells the program to perform a direct analysis procedure. Our first step in our workflow was to assign our flex and axial parameters to our system, which instructs the program basically to reduce the flexural and axial stiffnesses of the members. Here, I can see that the direct analysis definition was successfully created by the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, and the flex and axial parameters have been assigned. The second step in our workflow was to generate load combinations. We were looking for repeat load combinations with notional loads. Let's go ahead and take a look to ensure that that was brought over successfully. Here I can see that the load combinations were successfully generated. They are repeat style load cases, and they are also considering the notional loads within each load combination. The last step in our workflow was to invoke our direct analysis command. Here I can see that my multi-run analysis has been written over to the input file successfully. And at the end of the input file, I can see my perform direct analysis LRFD command has been specified. At this point in my workflow, I'm ready to perform the analysis and review the results. If I were ready to take it a step further, I can also specify all of my design parameters, which I would do directly in the STAD Pro analytical modeler. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.